Hello and welcome to the 11th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games. I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offense to complete this tutorial. In today's topic we will be covering doors in your levels. There's a few types of doors and we're going to cover most of them and the situations that they'll be used in. We're going to start by creating a wooden door inside of this frame that will rotate. Start by selecting your no draw material from your texture browser. Press Shift B to select your brush tool and block out where you want your door to be in brush. My door is 56 units wide by 112 units tall, although your brush based door can be however big you need it to be for your level. Once the brush is created, I'm going to hide the frame so I can texture it. I'm going to use this Inferno door texture. Once it's selected, I'm going to right click on the front to apply it. You'll notice that the texture isn't properly applied to the brush as it's too big and is unaligned. We're going to use the Justify option in the Face Edit Sheet. Press Shift A to open the Face Edit Sheet, and then select the texture and click Fit. This will automatically fit the texture to the face that it's assigned to. I now need to apply this texture to the back of the door in the same way that it's applied to the front. To do this, I'm going to left click the front of the door to select it, navigate to the back of the door, holding the Alt key on my keyboard, I'm going to right click the back face of the door. This will automatically apply the texture with the same settings as it does in the front. I'm now going to select and use a generic wood texture for the sides of the door in the frame, so that way when the door opens, it's textured. Pressing U to unhide the hidden frame, I'm going to bring that back into the game. Double clicking on the door, we're now going to make it a function door rotating. With the object properties open, press Ctrl T on your keyboard to tie this object to an entity. Under class type door to automatically see what door options we have. Select Function Door Rotating and click Apply. You'll notice that we now have a blue sphere in our level. This blue sphere is called the helper. It shows the origin, or for a function door rotating, where the hinge is. If you don't see this, up in the top click Toggle Helpers, and this will enable or disable the helpers in your world. To move the hinge, locate it in one of your 2D views and put your cursor over it. This will turn into a little crosshair and then you can click and drag and move it around. Move it to where you want your hinge to be, over in the side. There's only a few values that we need to configure on our door to make it work how we want. The first of this being the sounds. The start sound and stop sound are the sounds that are played when the door initially starts and then stops moving to its open position. The start closed sound and stop closed sound are the sounds that the door makes when it was in its open state and is going to its closed state. I'm only going to set a start sound and a start closed sound. Clicking browse, I'm going to type door in my filter. This will give me an option of all door sounds that I have available to me. You may need to click Autoplay Sounds to get sounds to play when you select them. Once you've found a sound that you like, click OK and then Apply. I'm going to use the same sound for the Start and Start Close sound, so I'm just going to copy and paste it into both fields. The other option that we want is Delay Before Closed. Whatever you set into this value, the door will stay open for this amount of time and then close. I want the door to stay open until I tell it to close, so I'm going to set this to negative 1. That's all I want to do for this door, I just need to check the flags to make sure that all of these settings are correct as well. Under flags, there's a few options that we'll want to set here. The main one being use opens. This tells the game that the player needs to use their use key to open this door. Typically it's bound to E, but the player may set it to any key that they want. The other options that you may use are X and Y axis. This tells the entity to rotate on the X or Y axis instead of the default axis. If your door is rotating the incorrect way, check or uncheck these to try to get it to rotate the proper way. With time, you'll learn which flag to set for which rotation you want the door to go. I'm going to click apply and cancel and that door is done. The next door that I want to create is a sliding door that goes into the ground. So by selecting my no draw texture, and creating this in the frame, once again, 56 units wide and 112 units tall, I'm going to hide my frame and texture this with a generic metal texture from CS Assault. I'm justifying the texture to the top to get the frame up there, and now I'm just holding Alt and right clicking to apply the texture to the sides. Now with that textured, I'm going to select it and press Ctrl T to tie it to an entity. I'm going to type in door in the class again, and select function door. Click apply, and instead of using those flags to decide where the door goes when told to open, we now have the move direction. Under the drop down selection, I'm going to click down. This will tell the door to move downwards when told to open. How a function door works, when it's told to move, 
it moves the length of itself. So right now it's going to go 112 units straight down and then stop. This causes an issue with texture clipping as it's going to be on the same plane as the floor. We don't want this to happen. So I'm going to set the lip to 2. Setting this to 2 will make the door go down 110 units. Think of it as a modifier to how far for the door to move. If the door is 112 units high and told to go down, normally it will go 112 units down. By setting the lip to 2, it's going to subtract 2 off that value, telling the door to only move 110 units down. If I were to set this value to a negative number, it would add to the amount of distance moving. So if this was negative 2, the door would then move 114 units down into the ground. But since I want the door to stay up a little bit, I'm setting this to 2, making the entity move 110 units. Clicking Apply, and then changing the speed of the door using the speed parameter, I'm going to set this to be 40. This is how many units a second the door will move. Since it's about roughly 120 units tall, this will take 3 seconds to open. A little bit under, I'm just rounding up. I'm going to set my start sound again. And then once that sound is set, I'm going to put it in the start close sound as well. I'm going to leave this to stay open for 4 seconds and then automatically close. Under flags, once again, you'll notice that touch opens is checked by default. What this means is that when the door makes contact with a player, it automatically opens. This is good for bots who don't quite understand doors sometimes, especially in Counter-Strike Source. So they'll just run into it and then the door will open and they can go through it. I'm going to untick this and use Use Opens instead. Clicking Apply and Cancel, we're done creating this door. The next door that we're going to create is going to be a door with jibs. Start by pressing Shift E to select the Entity tool. Create a new entity in your level and then in class type prop underscore door. You'll see prop door rotating, select it and click apply. We'll now get a little red box on our ground. Scrolling down to world model, click browse and then do a search for door. Under door you'll find lots of things that you can use for a door. You can use any model you like, you just have to manually specify that blue helper ball for the hinge. The model that I'm looking for is props downtown slash door interior 11201. This is the door that has jibs that break when the player deals damage to it. We can verify this by looking down in the model browser. We can see all the possible jibs that the door will spawn when it takes damage. If the door has these, it will typically automatically use them in your level when the player deals damage to it. Selecting this and pressing apply, I'm going to put the door into place. With the door in place, I now need to tell it that it's okay to break when the player deals damage to it. Going under the Flags tab, I'm going to tick Start Breakable. Clicking Apply, and then going back to Class Info, I'm going to do a little bit more additional configuration to my door. We'll see that there's speed once again. I'm going to change this to 75. I'm not going to set any sounds as it's not needed. We also have the option of Open Direction. This key value may not appear in all Source Engine games. You will instead have a flag that says Reverse Direction. If your door opens the wrong way in your level and you don't have this key value, just use the reverse direction flag under the flags tab. We're going to create another door now, just shift dragging this over. We're going to change the model of this to be door metal 112. This is another door that has jibs that will come off of it when you deal damage to it, but I don't want this door to take damage. So I'm going to uncheck start breakable. Clicking apply and then cancel, those doors are actually complete. The next thing that we're going to make are doors using the old Half-Life model of Prop Door Left. Creating a new model, and then once again making it a Prop Door Rotating, we're going to do a search for World Model. Doing a search for Left will give us the prop Props underscore C17 Door 01 Left dot MDL. This door has been around since Half-Life 2 and is still used in every game pretty much. Although I had to manually port it to Counter-Strike GO, it does work in every Source Engine game. The benefits of using this door model is that it can use a push bar or a handle that automatically animate when you interact with this door. So I'm going to select a quick metal skin, click OK, and then apply. We'll see that we have the helper ball over on the side again where it needs to be. Under class info, we now see we have hardware type. This existed on the other prop doors, but it didn't work. If you change this, it would do nothing. We have lever, push bar, and keypad. Keypad does not work in Global Offense but it should work in Counter-Strike Source, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, and other games. As you begin mapping, you'll learn what does and doesn't work from engine to engine. I'm going to create two of these doors, one with a push bar and one with a lever. 
and then we'll see the animation that goes along with these. That's actually all there is to creating doors. I'm going to compile my level, and then we'll see what everything looks like in-game. Here we are in-game. We'll now see that we have all the doors that we created, and here's our sliding door. I walk up to it and press E, and the door will slowly descend into the ground, staying up two units, as that's the lip that we defined. The door will automatically close after four seconds. We're now going to press E on our function door rotating. The door opens, and it stays open until I tell it to close. This is the door that will break when we shoot it. We'll see that it opens and closes just like a normal door, and this door will not break when shot. I can unload a full magazine into this door and nothing will happen to it. Whereas this door will fall and break apart as I shoot it. Do note that the doors still work after they've been destroyed. Going over to our door left models from Half-Life 2, when we press E, we'll see that the door automatically has a turn animation on the handle. It also automatically plays sounds that correspond with whatever hardware type you have on the door. That is something that makes these doors very powerful and very good to use in every level that you use. This is the push bar door. On one end it has a handle that you would grab to open, and on the other side we have our push bar. Once again, it has sounds that automatically correspond with the hardware type, and the push bar has a slight animation. I hope this tutorial helped you create doors in your level. Please stay tuned and subscribe for more version 2 Hammer Tutorial maps. Thanks for watching, and happy mapping!